I think the goal of, of our chain in general and the community uh, as a whole is to find new ways to coordinate human activity uh, so that we can be more efficient, more free, uh, that we can have interactions that are more meaningful, and that we can use computer technology in the blockchain to drive our own destiny as opposed to you know having it come to us from the top down. So the main issue with blockchains today is that they're not scalable because every node has to do process every transaction as opposed to nodes kind of sharing the load and processing transactions in parallel. What we need is something that can kind of handle visa level transaction rates, about 40,000 transactions per second. And what we've got currently is something that's about two or three orders of magnitude slower than that. Clearly, right, Bitcoin is moving billions of dollars through the network for just this one thing. So it, it's a pretty good answer. But Ethereum comes along and says we could do better than that. Instead of storing a ledger, let's store the state of a virtual computer. Uh, in Ethereum, it's based on the Turing machine model, where you start an event, it runs to completion, and then it's done. The next question you want to ask is, well, what kind of virtual computer? Ethereum's answer, unfortunately, makes it so that Ethereum, as it is currently conceived, can't scale. And the reason is because the, the virtual computer that they pick is sequential, right? One thing at a time. What it would mean is that we would have to serialize all the world's transactions. That's not how the world's financial systems work, and it's not how nature works. As it stands, right, Bitcoin and Ethereum are both proof-of-work networks, and the proof-of-work is expensive because you're using thermodynamics to provide you with security. With a proof-of-stake system, we can get all that hardware tasked with actually doing useful work again. So really, when we're thinking about the kind of scale that we need, we need Facebook and Visa together at the same time. That's what got me into this, and that's what Archain basically has been uh, set up to do. So one of the ways that Archain is trying to move past Ethereum is by providing really good type system in which you can prove that contracts don't have these kinds of races. So there are two major improvements that will shift the structure of the blockchain. One is to um, improve the consensus algorithm and the other is to improve um, the, the, the virtual computer. Um, but we also have a sharding solution that is dividing up the network into pieces that the whole network doesn't have to know about everything that happens everywhere else. In our chain, we've got all of these events happening at the same time, and there's no reason that if this one runs first, or this one runs first, that we sh couldn't do it in the other order. So uh, if you rearrange it so that you have your virtual computer is concurrent from the beginning, and the model of concurrency is already um, built around a thing that kind of automatically shards, uh, then you get scaling for free. So it gives you a lot more flexibility in the way that you are constructing your programs and, and letting them interact with each other. Um, and I said, well, I have the technology to do that um, um, because I had been uh, working with a certain mathematics that I had already um, taken to commercial scale inside Microsoft, and we'd never been able to realize the decentralized nature. So the reason why our chain exists, like, at least from my point of view, is because Greg Meredith couldn't convince Vitalik to use the row calculus virtual machine, and so he had to like start his own community and blockchain project, the reflective higher order pi calculus virtual machine is the best virtual machine possible. So the design of Rolang itself originated in a version of Pi Calculus that Greg Meredith invented called the Row Calculus. So Pi Calculus, the only thing you can exchange are names, whereas in the Row Calculus you can send processes. You know, the first thing that people will notice about Rolang is that it's inherently concurrent. You get to think about concurrency from the very beginning and it's represented right in the syntax. So then we undertook the process of converting this 30-year-old C++ code and trying to convert that into a Scala virtual machine the beating heart of Rolang is a library called RSpace, which is the database that implements what we call the tuple space. The, the tuple space in, in the Rolang programming language is responsible for matching up messages that get sent on channels with uh, code that wants to receive those messages. Everything in Rolang that's computational is modeled as sending messages between processes, and RSpace is what does that. 
Like, uh, one of the things I like to say is, I can stand in front of a crowd and, and with full integrity, we can get to visa level um, transaction rates. Why? Because we can build out 40,000 different, what we call namespaces. Blockchain is coming along at the perfect time, right? Because just, just as trust in centralized corporate data systems is, is at its lowest, right? We are, we are now offering the ability to have something that's fundamentally different. A, a data network that's run by the people on their, for their own benefit, uh, by our own efforts, right? By the software that we write, by the machines that we build and operate, and by the applications that we construct on top of that platform. And I think it's really cool. Yeah, relax, no one's in charge. <laughs>